Most of us want to be able to travel the world and explore different cultures, but we all know that checking some places off our bucket list can be quite expensive. But does it really have to be? In this video, I'll show you how I was able to visit seven countries and 15 different cities for the incredibly large sum of zero dollars. And if I was able to do it, then you can do it too. And in this video, I'll teach you how. But first, if you're new here, welcome to the channel. My name is Ricardo Garcia and every week I share tips to help you save more money and make more money. So if you want to get ahead financially, then subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit that little bell icon because that's the only way you'll be notified every time I release new content. As I said in the beginning of the video, for the last three years, I've been able to travel the world without having to pay anything when it comes to travel expenses. During that period of time, I was able to watch my favorite soccer team play against Eintracht Frankfurt in Germany. I got to drink a couple beers watching the sunset in Cartagena, swam in the crystal clear waters of Aruba, walked through the narrow streets of the walled city of Toledo, visited one of my childhood friends in San Diego, California, and went on a five-day road trip with my sister throughout the Northeast United States. And I got to visit all of those places without having to pay a single dollar for airplane tickets, rental cars, or hotel rooms whenever I stayed at a hotel. And how did I do it? By taking advantage of something called credit card churning. You might or might not be familiar with that term, but you're probably familiar with this. I'm sure every month your mailbox gets bombarded with juicy offers from different credit card companies trying to persuade you to open a new credit card with them. Well, inside of some of those envelopes you get, lies the secret to traveling the world for free, so hear me out. The reason why you get so many offers like this one, or this one, or this one, is because credit card companies are constantly fighting with each other to try to win you over as a customer. They're just playing a numbers game. They're willing to give you all of these great sign-up bonuses and they're willing to take a loss on the short term just to get you to sign up with them because they're betting that you might turn out to be like the average American who has just under $6,000 in credit card debt. They're hoping they can get you to open a credit card, spend money that you don't have, get into debt, just so in the long term, they can make money off of you in the form of late fees and interest payments. But if you understand how the system works, you can actually hack the system and use it in your favor. You can simply sign up for one of their credit cards, meet the spending requirements to get the bonus, use that bonus for travel credit, and then repeat the process again and again and again with different credit cards, and you'll be able to travel the world completely for free, just like I do. That whole process is what credit card churning is. Now, in order to become a successful churner, you're gonna need to follow two things. First of all, there's gonna be four very important rules that you can never break. And secondly, you're gonna to need to follow a system. Let's start with what I call the four unbreakable rules of churning. And then I'll share with you the exact same spreadsheet I use to plan my churn and I'll teach you how to use it. The first rule is no matter the card you get, you can never spend any money you wouldn't normally spend just because you wanna look in those bonuses. Depending on the card that you apply for, you may have to spend several thousand dollars in just a few months to meet the spending requirements to get the credit card bonus. There's some cards that ask you to spend a thousand dollars in the first 90 days, others want you to spend three grand in the first three months, and the ones with the most exclusive bonuses expect you to spend around $5,000 in a similar period of time. If your current spending isn't high enough to meet the spending requirements of a specific card, then that card is completely off limits for you. You shouldn't get a card just to go on unnecessary shopping sprees to buy things that you don't need and spend money that you can't afford to spend just because you wanna get a couple hundred dollars of free travel. It's simply not worth it. Instead of doing that, just get a card that you're 100% sure that you can meet the spending requirement without changing your current spending habits. Once you have that card, put all of your normal everyday spending on it until you reach the minimum requirement to get the full bonus. That way, you'll get the free travel perks with money that you were gonna spend anyways. Okay, the second rule is that as soon as you open a new credit card, you should immediately set it up for automatic payments. Yeah, credit card churning is a great way to enjoy free traveling, but it should never come at the cost of being charged late fees, charge interest payments, or by any means getting to debt because you forgot to pay your credit card on time. So to avoid that, call your credit card issuer and ask them to enroll you in auto pay and authorize them to debit the amount that you owe from your checking account on a set date every single month. 
You'll probably have two options when it comes to signing up for AutoPay. The first one is paying the minimum amount due every month. And the second one is paying your outstanding balance in full. Me personally, I prefer the latter, especially if you're already following rule number one and you're only using the credit card for your normal daily purchases. Because if you're doing that, that means that you should have the money to pay your full balance without a problem. By signing up for AutoPay, you're gonna save a lot of time, you'll avoid late payments, which can hurt your credit score, and you won't be charged any interest. Moving on to the third rule, this is a short but nonetheless important rule. Whenever you are about to choose a new credit card, always keep in mind annual fees. There's gonna be some great cards out there that offer amazing travel benefits and have no annual fees. Some others have annual fees, but they'll decide to weigh them for you during your first 12 months. And there's also some cards with annual fees as high as almost $600. Typically, I like to stay away from any cards that have fees, unless the benefits that the card offers me makes it well worth paying that annual fee. For example, the World of Hyatt credit card has an annual fee of $95, but every year you get a free night stay if you keep the card open. So if you happen to be traveling to places like Chicago, Zanzibar, or Paris, you could use that free night to stay in hotels like this one, or this one, or this one. Keep in mind that those hotels that I just showed you charge more than $350 a night, which makes those $95 that you pay for the card way lower than the cost of a night at those hotels. So if you're gonna use that free stay every year, it might be worth keeping that card. When it comes to annual fees, all you have to do is analyze the value that you get from each card and compare it to the fee that you're paying and then decide if paying that fee makes sense for you. Okay, so the fourth and final unbreakable rule is that you should never get into credit card churning if you're planning on getting a major loan in the next 12 months. Contrary to what most people think, credit card churning is not gonna ruin your credit score. Yes, every time you open a new credit card, you can expect your score to dip anywhere from three to 10 points, but that's only in the short term. As long as you keep paying your credit card on time, and you keep the utilization low, as time goes by, you'll find yourself with a higher credit score than what you have when you open the card. But keep in mind that every time you apply for a new credit card, a new hard inquiry will show up on your credit reports. And the number of recent inquiries can sometimes make it harder to get approved for new accounts. So just as a word of advice, if you're planning on applying for a major loan or a mortgage in the next year, it might be smart that you put credit card churning on hold at least until you get approved for the loan. Okay, now that we covered those unbreakable rules, when you start credit card churning, it's only gonna be a matter of time before you find out that the real secret to be successful as a churner lies in having a detailed plan to manage what credit cards to sign up for, when to sign up for them, and how to meet the minimum spend requirements to get your sign up bonuses. So let me show you how I keep track of all of my cards. So I created this spreadsheet to help me stay organized. I'm gonna leave a link in the description below in case you wanna download it and use it for yourself. So as you can see, I like to divide the document in three different sections. First, I have my current cards. Those are the cards that I'm currently using. Then I have a list of potential cards that I might like to apply for in my next round of applications. And then the final section is for my closed cards. Anytime I decide to close an account, I just simply move it from current cards to this section. Normally, I like to wait between one or two years and then I try to get the same card again. So by having this closed card section, it really helps me visualize when can I attempt to go for the sign up bonus again. So by quickly going through these cells, I'm always able to see when I open the card, if it has an annual fee and how much is it. Then on this column, what I do is I record if the fee is waived uh, for any period of time. And if it is, all I have to do is just put when the annual fee is due. The cool thing is that I have until that day to decide if I want to keep the card open and pay the fee or just use my points and close the card. Just as a side note, it might be helpful for you to put that date on a calendar and set up a reminder or set up any type of alarm. That way, if you forget to check this document for a while, you are not gonna be penalized with the fee. Then what I like to do is I typically write a sign up bonus I'll be getting once I spend the minimum requirement. And on this column, I'll put the dollar amount of that minimum spend requirement and the time frame that I have. Here, as you can see, I try to keep how much I spent so far because it gives me a better idea of how much spending I have left until I can actually claim my travel rewards. And once I complete it, I just put the word complete and I take off the dollar amount. 
Now here, what I do is I put how many points I accumulated so far and next to it, I like to write how much those points are worth in dollars because it just gives me a better idea of how much money I have and how much money I can use for my next trip. Okay, and last but not least, I took this idea from a personal finance blogger called Chris Raining. So what I do is I mark a card as a core card if based on the annual fee and the card's benefit, it's worth keeping in my wallet. So therefore, if one of the cards here says no, then that card can be closed if I need to. That's the spreadsheet I use and it really helps me stay organized. So as I said before, if you wanna use the same spreadsheet, I'm gonna leave a link for you to download it down below. Feel free to use it as it is or make any changes to it that suit your style. Okay, now that you understand what credit card churning is and you're ready to start racking out some points, I want you to do something. I would like you to write down below in the comments section the first destination that you would like to visit once you get your travel points. Now, I do want you to write it down below. It's only gonna take you a couple of seconds, but according to science, you're 42% more likely to reach any goal as long as you write it down. So go ahead, do it. I'm gonna make sure I hold you accountable for it. If you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it, don't forget to hit that like button. I really hope it helps you tackle your bucket list with some credit card points. Again, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you on the next video.